because we're gonna just jump back in for one more league playing just playing Death, or Death Shadow. Because as soon as they path you, then you start punishing them with like Liliana Last Hope, Snapcaster plus K Command. It allows you to cast your Gurmag Anglers better. It allows your Faithless Lootings to be better because you can hold excess lands. You don't have to play lands in order to get there. So, like, the cards that matter are Supreme Verdict, Search for Escanta, and, like, Snapcaster Mage. The damage burn spells don't matter. Um, like, as long as you, you want to hover at, like, 9 or 8. Yeah, we're going to ship this and keep this one. So this is a hand where... Um, let me use my scry here. Four one, yeah. Um, I don't really think I want this card. Put on the bottom. Because I'm going to go for the land. So I'm going to bobble my opponent and figure out what they're doing. If they're like a creature deck, then I'm going to hold for dismember. If they're not a creature deck, then I'm going to fade this looting. They are a creature deck, so we're going to go like this in order to play Death Shadow. I try to hover at like 9, 9 or 8, just enough to make it so Death Shadow Stubborn Denial's live, but you just have to put them in the squeeze where like, they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. So we're going to get black, red, just in case I need to get another land. Like, you really just put them in the squeeze, and then you make it so, like, like the Stubborn Denials are just insane against them. Okay. We need a land. Real bad. These two cards are probably going. Jeez. This one's going, and this one's going. <clears throat> Depends on the context of your hand and the board state. There's sometimes, another nice thing about Death Shadow is you often can, like, checkmate somebody. Because, like, with discard spells and counter spells, you're like, okay, I can literally play around everything. All right, we're going to get... This Arch Druid is going to be so annoying, though. I guess I can go like this, take the Arch Druid, and then if I draw a land, I can play both. Because I would like to get Death Shadow going, because Death Shadow Battle Rage is going to be my best way to win. What a kick in the nuts that is. I guess we're just going to take this company. Because they draw a land and I won't be able to stub it. Even if I, I need another thing to be able to stub this. And I guess if these things become large, at least they're going to then do more damage to me, which makes my battle rage better. Yeah, I think surgical is just a trap all around. Like, I would, I would, that's, a, that's just so good for the home team. Like, you, you're going to lose more gains because you have Surgical in your deck than you're going to win. Like, Surgical is cute with Death Shadow, but the problem with Surgical, and I actually had this problem for a little while, is like, I, I put Nihil Spellbomb in my graveyard, okay? And I overboard Nihil Spellbomb all the time. I just bring it in like wherever it's medium. And that's something that I had to like break break myself of. Because there are times when like this spell bomb is actually like there's another card that's actually better instead of like being able to do something that's very minor. We got a flash of an Ulamog there. Metal Sentinel. Alright. Can't even use your Pendlehaven, dude. Nice deck. All right, well, we're going to get nasty. I guess we'll just ditch this. It doesn't matter. It's not like we're ever going to Snapcast or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get what you're saying there, Teddy. But I think on average, you'll gain more percentage points for not having um, surgical in your 
in your sideboard because of the amount of times you wrongfully board it in. And like I do that sometimes. Like I sat there and I thought for a little while, I was like, man, I'm having such a difficult time with Tron and I want another card for KCI. Maybe I should be boarding a surgical. And it's just not good to do. So we're block block, take six. Cad. Can I attack? I can't I can't attack because I'm just dead. We're just dead to a lot of stuff here. We're dead to a lord, we're dead to um the go wide creature. We're basically dead like this right here, yeah. Yep, they got me. That was unfortunate. Yes. What are the great matchups and what are the terrible matchups? So the great matchups are any spell-based combo deck. Any deck where like so Death Shadow has three main forms of interaction. They've got counter spells, discard spells, and removal. And if you're if basically if two of those are really good, then you have a you're a very good matchup. Um, um Well, Burn's the, I think I think I think your favorite against Burn, which you understand. I think Infect's a good Infect's a good matchup unless you, you know, get invisible stalkered. And I think you're ahead of Jeskai. Blue White. Tron's like meh. Mardu, you're on the wrong side of Mardu. The only matchups that are like truly awful is like blue white. I think Affinity, you're right there with a you play Colagon's command. That can't be that bad, right? This is another matchup that I just don't really know how to sideboard against. I oftentimes just end up cutting like these cards here because like Gurmag Angler doesn't really do a lot. Um, I want to just break their synergies up and then clean up with like a Liliana or an Engineered Explosives and then like attack once and then, like or Grim Lava Magic and attack once with Death Shadow and kill them. I have to keep enough Stubborn Denials, especially if they have Shaman in the pack. I'm not even sure about that, Teddy. Like, I, I think, I think it's it's obvious. It's, like, it's obviously a knowledge. You got two I okay. I can see that. We do. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got different things. I I, I board differently from nameless. I'm also biased. I love this kind of deck here. Like, I love Delver decks. I love this. So like, I'm not necessarily the greatest person to talk to about this. So I'm going to keep. We're going to scry with our bobble. We're a little different, right, Teddy? Dude, screw Brandon. He doesn't like Faithless Slithering. Guy's a scrub. All right, we don't need another land. I'm actually just going to fetch that land and then play Lava Man. I like the counters because you can hit Company, Cord, and Shaman in the pack, which are pretty big. Which is pretty big game after sideboarding. It's like we don't need to draw any more lands for the rest of the game. I would appreciate that. Oh. All right, so let's just shoot this. Right now, and then we're gonna play our steam vents untapped because we might need to bolt something next turn. <clears throat> but they also have uh, whatever it is, lead the stampede, like the one that like ringleaders them. Okay, heritage druid. In the land or elf. So we're gonna kill the heritage druid. Is that one is the scariest? Alright. Um
I think I'm actually just going to snap bolt this because I want to save this dismember for like an Azuri or um, an Azuri or a whatever it is or an Archdruid and I would like to just start attacking. Cause this like gets a clock on the board. It's like you don't need a lot to win this matchup as soon as you have control of the board here. Yeah, I've definitely seen. I mean, it's obvious. Like I probably could have shaved one nameless. Like that probably would have been like an adult move. <clears throat> Probably two is fine until I get reason to play more. That Pendle Haven's annoying. Okay. Okay, so they're drawing a Heritage Druid. So let's shoot this. We cut our looting, so we might as well just play all of our lands. This Lava Mancer is picked off like. So many creatures. I almost want to like just battle rage my snapcaster to get another card in the graveyard. Okay, so there's bolts. So this is where things kind of get tough here. Because here comes the collective company. They should probably come to me now. <coughs> the freaking Gurmag Angler. Put this on the bottom. I think we're going to put this on the top. I think we're just going to try to kill everything and then kill them with a Snapcaster Mage. We're probably just never casting this Gurmag Angler. We're just going to like nug them for 20 with this Snapcaster. There's an argument to boarding out all of my Gurmag Anglers. They have a Heritage Druid in their hand. <clears throat> yeah, just like Snap Beats is gonna probably gonna win me here. Unless I draw a Shadow. RTFC Productions, thank you for the uh, thank you for the the follow. Okay, so I might as well just kill this with the trigger on the stack and then kill this because like I'm gonna be able to get my life total down. I don't really want because like this game's gonna go for a while, and I don't want to just get randomly punked out, especially when I have a dismember. And like if I draw Death Shadow, I'm gonna be able to get Death Shadow um, low enough anyways because this dismember. Like I might end up just dismembering something right here. Uh, I just wanted to say that I played your list of FM this week, went 4 0. I think all the help from your stream definitely helped. Hey, I appreciate it, Tin Man. Jesus. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. What a troll. All right, well, we're definitely attacking our Snapcaster Mage in. And we're just battle raging that thing. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a tough one to beat. I kind of want to just cast my Battle Rage, but like that's probably not going to actually win me the game. This thing's going to be a huge problem. I might have to try to get Gurmag Angler in play now. Mm -hmm. So they have another company, which is not good for the home team. Oh, that was a sick draw. I'm just going to keep, well, I guess they can regenerate now, so I shouldn't attack.
It's gonna be a slog. They still have Heritage Druid X. Yes, it could be worse. I would hurl if my, if my opponent plays a communion class with something to bomb it. Okay, there's Heritage Druid. So let's push this because the, the Pendle Haven is going to make this Lava Lancer not great. So I think we're just, well, no, I can't do that because I, I need to get Gurmag Angler in play. Oh, that's pretty sweet. And I can just block and for, the, for days. So here's another way to win the game. I should have left up blue-red. That was a mistake. Block here. So Lava Mancer is actually kind of living out its usefulness. So let's roll this back. I'm going to pick up the Snapcaster Mage, but I'm going to play Gurmag Angler. I guess we might as well just leave another card in there, leave this Fatal Push. <coughs> yeah, I don't think it's great. Ever since Humans got great, Liliana the Veil's gotten worse. Liliana the Veil is not even super great in any of the fair matchups anymore because like they just go over the top of Liliana the Veil. Yeah, like Liliana, like it's not like I wouldn't fault anybody. I played Liliana a couple weeks ago. Okay, this board is growing, but we are just gonna keep gnawing through all my opponent's stuff here. We should not get got by an Azuri. What a grindy game this is going to turn into. Looks like they're going to Shaman the pack. Okay. Get this out of here. And then just pass. Like, we might as well just hide behind this Liliana for the rest of this game. We can't really do anything with this pen. I guess I should have I should have just dismembered something and then used the Lava Mancer when the Pendle Haven was not because that was a mistake. So we're just going to like use our resources here. Because so I can snap this back. Oh, I guess I made a mistake here. That's potentially not good. I might have messed up here. Okay, there's another shaman and a heritage druid. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus. This game is going to get much more difficult. So block, block, snap, push. Oh, sweet. Because that's not how that works, unfortunately. 
So now can I just block here, block this, push here. So yeah, I can now get rid of this because, well, hang on. Then I can't snap push, which is unfortunate. I guess I can just deal with this next turn because it's going to die anyways. Block, block, block this, block here, shoot this, take two. Alternatively, I can snap caster, like block, snap, block, push, block this, wrath my opponent's board. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. So this dies. Get state based effect out of here. We just need to avoid a shaman in the pack. So, hit this. What a tilt. What a tilt. I guess my opponent had like a million outs to that. Snap, push, still takes three. Hit here. Yeah, we take three no matter what. That's tough. That is tough. But what are you going to do? I'm just sad we played such a long game to lose. That's what I'm bummed about. Losing the first game was kind of frustrating also. Like we were we were like one draw step away and our opponent molded five. We we did not need too too much to win that first game. It just like didn't quite come together. So we can rattle off four in a row here. I might not get all four of them tonight. I'm a little tired. And it is almost midnight. Be up in six hours for work. Yeah, that was some pretty serious beats. But what are you going to do? <clears throat> I definitely ripped harder than the sun against my opponents before. I always think about bad beats and magic, and then I think of this poker hand that I saw that was Phil Ivy. It was Phil Ivy and Tom Dwan. And Phil Ivy literally lost one like $1.2 million. Like... Phil Ivey had the second best hand, and Tom Dwan had the best hand. And Phil Ivey was like, Dolly scooped in the finals to a bad matchup just to get home. It makes sense, kind of. But good, good on him. This was clearly Kevin's fault. Awesome. Just kidding. Kevin's amazing. Awesome. All right. Let's lead off. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. We're going to hold our street race. Because uh, we could hit like a Serum Visions next turn. Want to do something with it? Two Boggles. I think Shadow's okay against Boggles. But he doesn't have any ease, right? I don't know. I'm just I'm just like so biased. Like I have a hard time like quantifying what good matchups are. Did you see the two pocket kings lose? I did not. Okay, so here we go. So we're just gonna take ancient stirrings. Choke my opponent on mana, I guess. Dalway has one E. Yeah, I've been keeping a, I've been packing two, and I found that matchup to be actually pretty decent. But like, I always tell everybody, like, I really like Death Shadow. I think it's just a very good deck, and I enjoy playing it. So I think I'm kind of biased. All right, so that means we're gonna be able to get nasty and play, which is really important. It's like Gurmag Angler is your best card against KCI. 
That's why I, I, that's why I think Faithless Looting is also a, it's an improvement to the deck for reasons like that. I know Brandon doesn't like that at all, but okay, so we're gonna be able to delve. Take out one more card. So we want to get rid of the Snapcaster Mage, and I could just get rid of this can. I could get rid of both Snapcaster Mages because I, I, there's no guarantee that I hit my third land. But I could also get rid of this cantrip, because snap. Like I could just get rid of Street Wraith Serum Visions and look to hopefully hit a cantrip. That seems kind of greedy. So I think we're gonna go like this. <clears throat> yes, I would agree. I should have saved this. This was loose. That's I mean that's a good draw. It was loose of me to do that. So we want to. Ditch this, ditch this, and then probably just keep the Inquisition in the graveyard. I doubt that I'm going to be able to tap out for the rest of the game. That was loose of me to cycle that street right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they drew Buried Ruin. This probably gets Mirror Retriever. No, they got Ancient Starrings. Okay. It's also it's really important to get Death Shadow in this matchup because of how many EEs they have and how much they can find it, and they also have Grove of the Burn Willows. That's pretty good too. So let's start with this. I gotta figure out which one I can take. So if I take scrap, if I take mirror retriever, scrap trawler only gets back. Well, scrap trawler gets back mirror retriever. God, this is why this deck is so freaking obnoxious. I guess I just take mirror retriever because it makes them use more mana. Or I could just take the cantrip. And let them like work with what they have, but then they can just get the cantrip back. But this would have to die, or they can just chump like this and get it back. This is tough. I would agree. Try and pick a deck to grind with. They all seem about equal. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree there. The, the deck's hard to play. So this is like, there's no good way to do this. This is why this deck is decent. I'm going to take the Mirror Retriever because it's going to use my opponent's mana the most. And then next turn, I can either snap Thoughtseize or hopefully I can Thoughtseize sometimes. Like, one of my favorite ways to play against this deck is to snap cat, is to like attack in, they chump, and then follow up with a Thoughtseize. Okay, so this is actually really good. They're going to go for the Ironworks. And then we get to snap Thoughtseize and hit the Scrap Trawler. This worked out super good for the home team here. I think the blue-red is decent because you have Blood Moon. That's really the only reason why I think that deck's at all that great. So it's a control deck that plays Blood Moon. I like the breach ones, the ones you can throw the breach into like a combo when you game. It's it's much more Splinter Twin esque than anything else. Steam vents. My opponent's name's cool. It's Kirby Sliver. Okay, so attack. Then we're going to Thought Seize the Scrab Trawler, leave them with Wellsprings. My opponent top stacks KCI. This could be bad, but I think getting this is worth it. We're going to Inquisition. I don't think there's any reason to go too low on life total, especially considering Death Shadow is not going to do anything this game, likely. My opponent top decks a KCI, then they're going to be they're going to be operating with very little. But I guess with Buried Ruin, they're going to have a little bit more leeway. 
I would say that it's quite a bit worse. You just don't have the raw power level Death Shadow does. Alright, they're just wellspringing for days. Two sacrifice, one, two sacks. So they're not going to be able to play it. So let's find me a battle rage or bolt or snapcaster. I'll just scoop it up to Sam Visions. Okay. Like the reason why people don't play this deck as much as they used to is because it is difficult to play in the metagame adjusted to where if you're just the average Joe that plays Death Shadow, then you're not going to beat up on the competition anymore. So I like to cut Battle Rage. I don't really think Battle Rage is that good in this matchup or that needed. Like I think the best way to deal with this deck is to like attack the creatures. It's not attack the creature. Try, try to just like counter spell everything, discard spell everything, and then just like keep the battlefield clear that way. We're bringing in a Braid and Polygon's command, anyways. And like spell bombs just enough to harass them. <clears throat> I've almost thought about boarding out a Death Shadow in this matchup, just because there's so many ways to kill it. Yeah, that's why the Grix Stealth doesn't see any more play. And, like, but yeah, that's just why Grix Stealth doesn't see any more play. It's just, like, a, it's it's the training wheels version of this deck, to not be critical. So if I draw a second land, this hand's decent, but there's no threat. My opponent did mulligan, so I do kind of want to hit them with a discard spell, so I'm going to keep this hand. I get two redraws... I get three redraws, four redraws of the land. My draw step, next draw step, these two. If I hit a blue land, I should be in good shape. They put a card on top, so we have to figure out what that is. The braid's a decent pickup. Nope. Icker Wellspring. It's a good one. This deck appears to mulligan well also, which is impressive for a combo deck. Okay. That's what we're looking for. So, Inventor's Fair into Wellspring into Mindstone. So I don't really, I kind of want to cast the Serum Visions, but I also want to like, don't want to die with counter spells in my hand. They have an Ether Hub. Yeah, I think I think I need to do this in order to like, you know, we found nasty. So we're gonna put this on the bottom, and then one, two, three. I'm gonna put this on the bottom too. Because I just want to get to a point where I can cast Gourmet Angler. Yeah, I might have been right to do that, Teddy. The problem is I can just hold Stub, and they can still just play a land and get me, or like the Rejection. Okay. That Snapcaster is likely going to be an end of turn get in there. Just to start putting something on the board. Get that out of there. So we're getting close to having Gurmag Angler going on. I'd like to draw Street Wraith in the fetch land, because then I can delve and leave this ceremonial rejection in my graveyard. One, two, three, four, five. They have one card. I think we're going to go for it here. They don't have another combo piece. We're just going to play this Gurmag Angler. And then we're going to cross our fingers.
They played their Ether Hub. Excuse me. Okay. Now we're we're doing it. That's a really good draw too. Now my opponent's just not gonna resolve anything for the rest of the game. I'm probably going to like stub this and then abrade like a Mox Opal or abrade a Mind Stone because I like harassing the mana in this deck. And that's like the best use of these abrades. Just like get my opponent off their mana base. I agree, Teddy. I think you can you can build a deck to to want sixteen lands for sure. We're doing this in order to make it so this can hit a creature. Go respond. Cow target blue and spell. So okay, so that resolves. Let's go get come on, let me respond here. Why can't I respond? Okay. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, I'm a big fan of like attacking this deck's mana base when I can. So I'm probably gonna like abrade this mind stone. I played Freeman's deck for a little while, and I didn't like some parts of it. Some parts of it I thought were very good, but um, there were also other things that were not great, in my opinion. Let's see what my opponent's drawing here. I'm drawing Mirror Retriever. So I, do, I am going to want to stub that. I kind of want to just, like, harass my opponent's mana. I could just abrade this Mind Stone, which I think I'm going to do. Denies them a card. And like the KCI is going to be able to do enough damage. And I have another one and then like a Snapcaster Mage. Like my man is just going to get used. That's just something that I like to do as a magic player. I like to just be aggressive, take aggressive lines that just like cut off more of my opponent's plays, even if it leaves me in a little bit of danger sometimes. It's a decent draw. Probably not gonna play it though. We're probably just gonna hide behind this Gurmag Angler for the rest of the game, and like abrupt decay some something or. A braid something. So if I snap stub this, seven. If I snap stub and denial this thing, they're not doing anything for this turn. I guess we let that go because I can just hit whatever they they get. Defense grid. We're gonna let that resolve. Actually, each spell on its opponent's turn costs three, so I guess we're just gonna actually snap, snap, stub this. Two, two. I think I just re like I think, I think Death Shadow's just underplayed, and I like being able to kill Tarmogoyf. I'm going to braid this Mox Opal. Just like cut my opponent off mana. If they go to activate this, then I can 
fetch shock, thought sees, whatever they do. Because <clears throat> there's a chance they would have mox leveled the chromatic star. And then we could have thought sees, whatever they did. Yeah. That's how that that's how that goes there. I think you like as soon as I started to play this deck and understand what it was doing, and understand how to play against it, I just started winning. But like this deck's still pretty busted, in my opinion. Like it's likely the best deck in the format because like you need Death Shadow level of interaction or you have to ignore it in order to beat it, in my opinion. Because like control decks don't do anything against this deck. Um, nothing fair beats on this deck. Nothing that's not like a turn three, turn four deck beats on this deck, I think. I think you need to have like, I don't think Hollow One's fast enough to have a good game against this deck. Hollow One's got like the busted draws, but I think on average it's not. Like Infect and Storm are a race. Burn doesn't have a chance. Tron's like medium to bad. I think beats up on Mardu, Jund, Blue White Red, Blue White. You don't wreck KCI's face, Rafi. You can get out of here with that kind of hate speech. I think that deck is insane. <clears throat> Maybe we can get two quick turn threes here. Is there a cap in play? Thoughts on pre boarding 1k command. I think it's fine. The guys from Europe do that. The guys from Europe do that a lot. Okay. Street Wraith, nice. All right. The funny thing here is that we actually have to fetch Shock to kill this because we have to cast Serum Visions. I would, I would genuinely agree with what. Um, Teddy is saying there, if you don't, if you move away from Serum Visions and I'm on a really heavy Thought Seize, Thought Scour build, or um, Faithless Looting, Thought Scour build, then I can see a K Command in your main deck. Because you're just going to mill over so many creatures. Yeah, we're just dead. Opponent's got four cards, we're not doing anything. We need the land, but we don't have a creature to do anything with it with. So that game, that game is just like way over. Okay, so against Burn, we go here. I like bringing K Command against Burn because it hits a lot of their creatures, and sometimes they board in like the Ensnaring Bridge package because that's just like the nut against humans. I do think you need three denials, though. Like I'm, I'm big on three denials. I think you have to like play a threat and protect it. And you do that with discard spells and stubborn denials. We're already 1-0 against Burn tonight. So hopefully we can. We lost game 1-2 as well in that matchup. Even Heavy Scour, no looting. Bubble, bubble Command is slow and a very medium draw. I don't know. Like, it's, it's definitely not where I want to be, but I, I would understand if someone does. Like, Canister and Ben Jones did it for the GP. Oh, I don't like this hand, but, like, it kind of does a little bit of everything. I'm, I'm going to keep this. Though I could understand somebody that wants to throw this back. They have a Smuggler's Copter coming. We are playing a different kind of deck than I thought. Okay, so I'm just going to take this Bowmat Courier because I want to hit this Smuggler's Copter with a, um, with a, whatever it is, uh, Lightning Bolt. Okay, Inquisition's not bad. 
They do have a very awkward build of this deck going on here. There's Hazret. So both this, I kind of want to take this Spire Crash because I can't deal with it, and then Hazret this. I'm tempted to just play this tapped. And I think I'm going to. I'm going to be able to play Death Shadow at some point. If you were in control of that idea, what tweaks would you make to the deck? I don't know. Let's get this hazard out of here. I think the big things that I would change, if I was playing against Jeskai, Blue Red, and Mardu, I'd make sure that I had three Stubborn Denials in my main deck. Um, geez. I kind of want to snap Inquisition to get this Searing Blaze out of there. But then they could hit me with this. Um... Cut lootings and bobble, four scours, four scouring. Yeah, that's that's something very. Yeah, they're well, they're good and bad, right? I mean, enabling quick Gurmag anglers is is a, definitely a recipe for for victory. I think I want to fire this off just because I can snap it back. You know, we can take this searing blaze. We can start getting a clock. Yes. Yeah, you definitely need three denials and four snapcasters for sure. Passing it up. Definitely looking to snap bolt something. My opponent is just drawing like absolute garbage. This is like quite aggressive, but I would like to get going here. I'd like to turn this game around. And we're not gonna I really don't want to play a long game against a deck with Hazard in it. Alright, we get to get nasty this turn. Sure. Um Mishra's Bobble. Leave the Snapcaster in there because we do have KK Man. <clears throat> odd deck. Very odd deck for my opponent. I think Pyromancer is actually like not very good against these control decks and such. Because the, the cards you lose to are Supreme Verdict. Rift Bolt Mini. And like they, those don't fix that. I launch Shore. So crew this. Maybe. All right, hang on. Let me do this right here. Push this. Bolt this. All right, they're just scooping it up. It's a pretty horrendous draw for my opponent. They should have left a land, some lands in their hand. Also, Kumi Tar Pit against Jessica. Huh. Tried the pit. All right, do I want board differently? I don't think so. Like maybe Engineer Explosives is better against their deck. I kind of want the Dismember because of Hazret. Maybe I don't want four denials. Yeah, let's try this. They play out base lands because of Bowmat. Yeah, but you're sitting there with a with a whatever it is, a smuggler's copter, right? I mean, at least give yourself a chance, right? I board against Murf Murfug basically the same way I board against humans. Heater. Yeah, but you only have to play so many with Hazard, right? 
Yeah, we fixed our mulligan. So great. All right, I don't really want another bobble. I'm just wondering how aggressive. So we're gonna fetch shock probably. They we're probably not in the dismember range, but we easily could be. We're gonna kill this for sure. Okay, Thoughtseize is like not terrible. Loot, scoot, and boogie. So I'm likely to go Thoughtseize plus. Oh, now I think I'm just gonna hold up this abraid. Thoughtseize the next turn. Okay. Bow dangle. Bow diddly do right there. Alright, so let's destroy target artifact. Something I love here is we're gonna be able to play Death Shadow. Well, actually we can't unless we find a uh, discard or unless we find a land. So we're gonna be able to play Death Shadow here. So let's go, let's hit our discard spell. See what my opponent's got. Smuggler's Copter, Rift Bolt, Rampaging, Ferocidon. Jeez. I just want to take this Rift Bolt. We're going to go to six. Play this. And then just hold Thought Scour at the end of their turn or dismember. <clears throat> I'll just die, right? Teddy? So they still have Ferocid on in their hand. All right, that's a good draw. So I can play Gurmag Angler, dismember for two. Alternatively, I can. I don't want to play. I don't want to attack with my Death Shadow. I don't think we're that dead. Right? Like, we took this dismember. Like, I kind of want to just attack with my Death Shadow. Play this Gurmag Angler. I could looting, look for Battle Rage. Alternatively, I can just K command my opponent. Yeah, like I've got I've got a lot of options here. I don't really like dismembering if I'm gonna cast more for more than two life. So I think I'm just gonna attack and then play K command. My opponent wants to block. That's cool. Then, like, next turn, we can go Looting, Inquisition, Gurmag Angler. Okay, so there's a Rift Bolt on Suspend. Oh, this was stupid. Forgot how Smuggler's Copter worked there. Waited too long. That probably could, that could kill me. So they ditch Hazret. So target, so destroy target artifact. What I'm wondering is if I'm gonna want to go like hit up here, get have them ditch a card, and then no. What's going on? No, we're motoing. Oh my opponent just conceded the game. Hmm. 
All right. I don't really know what was going on there. I certainly don't think that my opponent was dead. Maybe he was. He probably was ghosting. That makes sense. It's probably like I actually don't have outs. Well, if you're ghosting, then you are a piece of garbage. That guy is a piece of garbage. We're already three matches in, so probably I'll probably be able to finish this league tonight. See, one day ago playing Mono Red Prison. I guess that's kind of unfair of MTG Box to tell me, but. Screw this guy. He is part of the fun police. I'm going to mulligan. I'd mulligan this hand anyways. I'll keep this one. In a hand like this, I would cycle my street rates right now. Especially now that we found another land. Two and ten against Red Prison. The good thing is we're going to be able to play our angler. We're just like not, probably just, although that was stupid because that was my island, whatever. One, two, three. Yeah, that was, that was dumb because that's my island to play around Blood Moon. They chalice me, it's gonna be kind of annoying. But if they chalice me, at least I've got Angler in play. Oh Jesus Christ, this is over. Yeah, this is wicked over. I don't even think I'm gonna cycle this. Oh, I might as well cycle this. Hang on. There's no reason not to. It's not like we're playing a fair matchup really where we have to like mind our P's and Q's. I don't understand why people would want to play this deck. Like, this is just, like, not very much, like, no matter what, like, this just isn't very much fun magic, right? What do they do? They ditch. I don't know what's going on. Like actual not on a mole six. Yeah, it's a pretty good mole. That's a nice part about this deck. Like deck's powerful. Mulligan's well, I think. Like at the end of the day, this is just a good stuff deck. Like a lot of people like a lot of people ask me about this deck and like like this is the best fair deck in modern. Oh my god. Chandra on that's pretty gross. If we hit a fetch land, yeah, we're gonna let that go. If we hit a fetch land, um, we can play another angler next turn, which would be pretty decent. This is the list that I put together. Do you think there's good anglers? Um, okay. Two things that one pair of bush. They don't want two things. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't really see any issues with this. Two left of my island, two swallowing tides, swamp water. Still an owl braid, collect the jolly coins. Yeah, I don't see any glaring holes in this game plan. Pretty sweet. So I'm actually just going to ditch, do this now to put two more cards in my graveyard. So that if my opponent does chalice me, that I can play Gurmag Angler next turn because they drew the swamp. 
that's like kind of non-intuitive, but it's the best we had. Like I'm still basically cold to a ch like I, I can't be in snaring bridge resolve game one. Four scout, three stub, two serum visions, two faithful slitherings. Yeah. What the fuck is this? Draw, discard all your cards. All right. Alrighty, opponent. I just gotta fade a. Um, I have to fade an ensnaring bridge for one turn. Basically, I've got everything else covered, but ensnaring bridge is the issue. I I think that Friedman's list is poor against fair decks. I think without serum visions, you lose a lot of percentages there. I do think what Friedman's list is doing is uh, is like it's not terrible, but I think he easily could fix some of the deck's problems by adding Serum Visions. Souls Moon, yeah. It's like certainly can this yeah yeah this deck's like this deck certainly can you know I mean like I'm cold do this on one here. Yeah, I, I think brutality is like brutality is just flexible. Sometimes it enables Gurmag Anglers. Um, so against this deck, here, here, here. I guess I have a lot of cards that I might be able to bring in, but I don't actually know how good any of these are. I'm gonna go with Battle Rage not being great. Cutting Seam Bridge makes the deck much more aggressive. The deck is good against fair decks. We can just made it better against. I don't. I think the deck. The deck is much better against unfair decks than it is fair decks, Jago. Like, like the deck is meant to beat up spell based combo decks that don't have good interactions. I think Friedman loses a lot of percentage against like Mardu Pyromancer, Jeskai, Jund. Not blue white because whatever that one's just gone. Uh, I think he loses a lot of percentage there. I think he loses percentages against humans because he's like a turbo angler deck and he doesn't really find removal as efficiency as a deck like Serum Visions. Like, this is like, I took this from Friedman's list and I think I've made it better because like it still does the same thing that Friedman's list does. Um, I don't know how to sideboard. I really am kind of at a loss here. Like, I want some of my removal because they play, like, Rabble Master. Um, probably can ditch one Gurmag Angler. Well, Gurmag Angler gets down. I don't, really don't know how to do this. Like, I know I want these for sure. Um, I kind of want Ceremonious Rejections, like, a little bit. I know I want the Stubborn Denial as well. I probably don't have time for another snap. I probably can just cut my Snapcaster Mages. And then bring in like one of these, one of these, one of these. I don't know. I don't really know how to do this. Somebody E come in for sure. Well, I want dismember right because it can hit Hazret. Snapcaster seems so slow, like, because they're playing Hazret, and they play, like, Stormbreath Dragon. Oh, whatever. We're going to cut a cantrip against the Chalice deck. Yeah, I like boarding. I like, I like aggressively boarding my Snapcasters out. Yeah, I would assume they keep Chalice in. No hollow one. I think I'm gonna mulligan. I don't have a threat or discard spell. All right, this is what we're talking about. If I don't get Blood Moon, this like this is a hand that can't really play around Blood Moon. But besides that, it's pretty good because like you have to go fetch out, fetch out cycle. We will put that on top. 
hits Bridge and Chalice. And I don't know if they're playing like um whatever the other card is that they play sometimes. Uh they play Relic. How many cantrips you safely cut with 17 lands? I try not to cut my cantrips. Okay, so maybe my rejections weren't good. Idle on. Okay, so fetch shock, fetch shock. Cycle. 12. This puts me to 6. So I think I want to do this in response to go to 4. Like, there's no need. Okay. I actually can do something, something I really like doing here. So now I can Thought Seize. But if my opponent plays a Blood Moon, I'm likely in okay shape. Mine's one of my second Nina snaps. Okay. Alright, I guess that makes I guess that makes sense, Teddy. So I kind of want to just hold my Street Wraith and go fetch shock. <clears throat> Blood Crypt, play Death Shadow. Play Death Shadow. <clears throat> and then we can kind of like, if they try to kill these Death Shadows, we can cycle this Street Wraith. We're kind of giving up on Blood Moon here, but like, we're gonna have two five fives in play if they Blood Moon me. Yep, that's that's what's going on. And like I did this, so like if this is how we go, this is how we go. Pretty cold to like. I guess we can hit Battle Rage. Okay, we still have Battle Rage and Bolt in the deck. Faithless looting. This is like the thing about it is like sometimes you can just like sometimes you can just like if your opponent takes turn three off they just die, and but while that's not exactly the case here that might be the case they don't have a bridge here, yeah like they're gonna get idle unlocked, not necessarily idle unlocked but because they're gonna chump both of my death shadows. All right, so we're gonna wait until after they double chump block here to cast this because we don't want to. There's no sense going down a four when it doesn't change anything. They still have to block both. It's gonna help us find our basic swamp. I'm basically only really worried about K command right now. Um. So I can cast this. So let's just ditch this and this. Talk to the owner brand at all. I got I streamed Brandon's list about a week ago, and liked it. I liked what it was doing. It's just a little too slow for my wheels. All right, so hopefully we can finish up here, get two back-to-back -back four ones. Maybe we'll open up some treasure chests for fun. I definitely liked what Ben's deck was doing with how it's linear and aggressive. And, like, so like here is what the differences are. So modern. So where is it? Oh, did I get rid of it? Friedman Shadow. It wasn't Ben Friedman. So, like, when I played Ben's deck, I really liked what it was doing, but I didn't think that it played a consistent enough game of Magic outside of just playing a, a threat on turn two. And I also felt like their snap, his Snapcasters weren't very good, and he didn't play an effective long game. So what I just cut one of these, one of these, just shaved in order to add Serum Visions back in the deck. And I think that makes the deck much more... Um, 
consistent while still being able to play a turn two. Like, you've seen this stream all night. We've been playing turn two anglers all night, right? Like, the best part about Dylan's deck is how aggressive, or Ben's deck is how aggressive it is. I think you can play Serum Visions, be more consistent, and not lose out. Uh, this is a good hand. I'm going to keep this. I think my opponent's a Ponza player. <laughs> Costs you money. Oh, Scalding Tarn Pass. So it's like we're playing against Storm, more than likely. Or Blue, White, Red. Playing against Storm, this is a pretty solid hand to have against Storm. We're going to be able to get Death Shadow in play fairly early. I should have fetched a black source there so that I could looting to find a fetch land to play Shadow. That was that was a mistake on my part. So I had a slight sequence issue here that's going to cost me probably... It could cost me a turn on the clock, which is just worth noting. But I think, I think Friedman's deck is like... Okay, so playing it's oh this can't be very good for the home team. I just want to take this wall of omens. Yeah, I think I was gonna take this wall of omens and then figure out what to do with that path to exile in, in a little bit. Um, I think Friedman's deck was like Actually, this is something that options. Um I think all right, that's pretty good. I don't know. I'm like I'm getting tired, so articulating is getting more difficult. All right, so we're gonna take this path. Give my opponent the opportunity to remand this faithless looting. The Dillion clicks card that I played before. Yeah, that is tough. For sure. We might be able to get our opponent here a little bit next turn where we can get them to just piss away a Lightning Helix at this Death Shadow when I go to like play it and then cycle my Street Wraith. <clears throat> well, I appreciate that. I'm actually going to cycle this on my main phase, or do this on my main phase here. I should give myself the opportunity to play something else, or then they're going to, and then we're going to get this lightning helix for free. This is just a trick. This is why, this is part of the reason why you have a decent Jeskai control matchup. Oh, I'm going to remand it. Okay. That's why you have a decent Jeskai control matchup, because it's a good draw. Because they just don't have efficient enough removal. Because like things like that happen, and just two for one them. I say I didn't really two for one them, but it kind of did. And then if they bolt this, then we'll just snap path, snap hit the Sahili. Yep. So they then we have Snapcaster in play. I, mean, I don't think I want to shock myself without a shadow. Inquisition. Inquisition this. Oh, wow. What a kick in the nuts that is. I guess it's not that bad. I didn't really want to shock myself there, so it would have been nice to have not done that. But hopefully, we're gonna flashback this looting and do a big into a big threat here. We don't even have to flash back, so I'm not going to. But we are just gonna keep my graveyard as intact as possible in case this game does go a little longer. Really? 
I guess, well, I guess I wanted to take, I didn't want them to get the incremental advantage with the Planeswalker. You know, like, they're going to get at least two scries off of it. And the Guardian's not doing anything. The Guardian could kill me. But, like, the Guardian's not doing anything on its own. I was dead to, like, either end of the combo off the top there. So, like, that's kind of whatever. Put it on the bottom. We're going to put this on the bottom. I don't really want to spin my wheels that much. Put this on the top. This was actually poor because this leaves me open to getting remanded. Like them going Sahili and then remand. I'm going to stub this. I think. I have another Gurmag coming. I can't even beat the combo anyways, so we're just going to stub this. I think we have stub up and our opponent has the mana to pay for it. We get punished. You might be right, Teddy. I get a little tired, so I'm, I might be missing some things. I've been going for about three hours now. And it is 12.15. So I'm, I'm getting a... My, some things might go over my head. I'm, I can feel myself getting a little worse at articulating what it is I'm saying. Put two cards on top. So we're going to definitely Thought Scour them. Oh, no. Shoot. Okay. I should have done that. I guess I should have done that with the effect. I F6. Would have been nice to get this colonnade out of there. So we're blocking with this. For sure. And then their last one's probably the next land. So we're going to... This is just a little trick here that I should have done in response to this trigger. Making it an island is I should have milled them. Yeah, there was a land. So I can play two Gurmag Anglers and attack and hope they miss. Actually, no, the two Gurmag Anglers have me covered because I can block both of their Snapcasters. Or both of their ground creatures. One, two, three, four, five. And again, we die to the combo, but such is life. They're going to have to chump two of my creatures next turn. It's very gross. I mean, it's kind of gross, I guess. Now I'd like to find a team of Battle Rage. If they just tick up, I'm not going to do that. Okay. It's not a good look either, good draw either. So let's go like this. So I keep the Street Wraith, and if I have to attack my opponent with both of my creatures, and if I keep Street Wraith, they have to chump with one, and then there's a lot of draws that kill me next turn. I think I have to keep with the Street Wraith. You send both anglers at Teferi. I kind of want to send both anglers at my opponent.
But I kind of want to ship. Going to three is too greedy, though. I, mean, I want to ditch this Gurmag Angler and the Street Wraith, and then I kind of want to send both of these at my opponent. Play another one. My opponent likely blocks with the Snapcaster Mage. I think going one and one seems worse. Because like if I go one and one, they just chump the one that goes into Fairy, and then they're still at four with a Felidar. And then, like, Lightning Bolt kills, or the, the Snapcaster Mage and Lightning Bolt kills me as well. But that's, I guess, the same thing either way. I think I've got to send them both somewhere. So I think I'm going to, I'm definitely going like this. And then I think I'm sending both of these at my opponent. It's tough. Because, like, this sucks, and this sucks. My opponent is so, like, untapped land kills me. Lightning bolt kills me. I guess I attack Teferi with both, give my opponent one draw step, and then they can attack me with both of their creatures. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to send both of these at Teferi. <coughs> I don't want to hold and then give him two draw steps. That was odd. Give that was that was like the worst attack. Give him two draws at an untapped land, I think. So we found a bolt. No. Not four. Snap path. <coughs> so his helix is me. So now I attack with one, and then play Death Shadow. That was odd. Can't play Angler. Yeah, and they got the Colonnade. Tilt. Okay. That's a fairy. It was such a bad beat. Such a good hit for them. We had this game marked out until we saw that Teferi. All right. I don't really know how to sideboard against a deck like this. Like, Lava Master doesn't seem great. EE doesn't seem great. None of my cards really seem that good. Kind of want the other Stubborn Denial. And I could see cutting like a street. I kind of want Battle Rage to shoot over the top of their like little dumb creatures, but I guess they don't really have that many little dumb creatures. They just have Felidar Guardian. I don't really want to sideboard that much. I don't really think this is a K Command latch up. I could be talked into Spellbomb, but I think that's just me. E hits Sahili, so I can buy that Teddy. So I just side, but the problem is like my removal is still good, right? At least some of it. Like I guess my lightning bolts aren't good. You don't want lightning bolt. But I can see doing this. Doesn't bolt. It bolt does stop the combo, but that's it. Hopefully, we have enough answers to that. Yeah, so I signed out my bolts. I think I'm going to do it like this. I have some grindy cards. I could see even like cutting another Street Wraith, maybe. Maybe I should cut a Street Wraith for an EE. 
this is a little tougher because I want more of my a little bit more of my removal. I also want to like leave in dis at least a dismember against Jess guy because now that they're playing whatever it is. Um I'm gonna mulligan this hand. I hate hands like this. Like you just kinda have to pray. Well, no, I'm gonna keep this. Sorry. It's it's rough, like these two cards aren't great, but we have so much early disruption. Backed up by a threat. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so this is like a take Snapcaster Mage, and then we're gonna stub their Spreading Seas, and then I'm gonna take the Vendillion Clip probably. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. K commands aren't really good against like humans. They're not great against. They're just kind of like slow. They're clunky. I guess now we just let the Vendillion click go. The problem is the click's going to take my shadow and then I don't have any threats. Yeah, it's just like not as efficient, you know? I do, but like it's not great, you know? I know some people that don't board it in. I have boarded in like two copies on the play, one copy on the draw. YOLO. Nice. So we get a Blood Crypt. Then Thought Seize. Probably just this Vendillion Click. We can deal with the other cards. It's going to turn into a Grind Fest. They hit, a, they hit a Geist. Oh my god. All right, well, that was a good hit. We get to take this path. Now we get to at least block the Geist, but oh my god, that Geist was scary. I'm not playing super great right now. I think I'm just a little tired. I don't feel super focused. Look at this guy with his hot, with his hot takes. Blooded Strand. All right, we're going to pass. Yes, Liliana the Veil will be very sick here if we could cast it. Now we can. So Liliana the Veil would be very good. Okay, so we know the last two cards. Block, kill, bolt kills me. So like, if I go to eight, five my opponents, hang on. If I go to eight, five my opponent, my opponent then fires up Colonnade, attacks me with Geist. I would have to pay three mana to dismember the Colonnade. I would take six. Five plus six is 11, so they would be down to 13. Then K commands lethal. So if I fetch an attack, the problem is they bolt me here, then it's no longer. If they bolt me and then fire up with both, then it's no longer, then I can't do that. I would, if they didn't have this lightning bolt, I could kill them over two turns, but that's just not how this is going to work. I don't think I want either of these. <clears throat>
I don't even necessarily believe that it's very good against humans and spirits, Teddy. I think that it's very good against Hollow One. I think that as soon as you get a Thalia's Lieutenant trigger, it undoes a lot of that. And plus, they're already playing Oriok Champion, which is just like even more of a beating. Put my opponent attacks with Geist, or I'm just like dead. Alright, nice. I think I'm still dead, but to this lightning bolt. Can you draw like a counter spell? Because we're going to take four anyway, so this like lightning bolt's just going to kill me. I'm sure I could have played this game better. I'm just a little bit out of it. Yeah. The guys were just big game. <clears throat> I'm going to play this. Maybe they'll do it on our turn for some reason. Yep, they got it. I think I could have won that match if I'd have been like fully good there. Yeah, I'm tired. I am tired. Let's open up our pity chest. Maybe we can open up a couple more here. Let's turn my video off. <clears throat> 